Okay, so figurative language. And we want to understand how to interpret. And some of it is very hard to interpret. I want to use some of this time to talk about, um, again, some funny things about what it doesn't say. And we're running out of time, so I'll try to be brief. <coughs> but I want to tell you guys a story and that'll take three minutes. <laughs> which probably means four. <laughs> you ever have that? Does pa- yeah, does Pastor Chris do that? <laughs> and in closing, <laughs> and you're like, Oh boy. <laughs> I do the same thing. He's, but he's more handsome than me. So. Okay, so there's two minutes of my three minute story. Years ago, when I still lived in California, I was moving from Southern California to Northern California. I had a very old Mitsubishi. And I was I was a new Christian, I was excited about what I thought God wanted me to do. And the back of the Mitsubishi had all my stuff. And I was driving north. I was, it was like a seven hour drive. And about halfway through the drive, my car started dying. It probably sounded like that. That's what it sounded like. <laughs> <laughs> and and so I started thinking one thing. I'll bet this means that God doesn't want me to move north. <laughs> That's all this can mean. <laughs> and this was many, many years ago. Like nobody had mobile phones. Get out of my car. Walk to find a pay phone. Call my mommy. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I need help. You're three and a half hours away. Well, why don't you call our your friend our friend Bill? And his wife Margie. They live about twenty minutes away from where you're at. Okay. <laughs> Hey Bill, it's Jeremy. Bill of the Jeremy. My car is dead. My call is soup. So 20 minutes later Margie comes and she picks me up. Drive back to their house. They're very dear old family friends. I was going to stay at their house and then Bill would help me the next day with the car. And while we're driving I said, Margie, I don't think God wants me to move north. <laughs> because my car is dead. <laughs> Pokvarios. 
Mm-hmm. And she said, well, Jeremy, maybe there's another explanation. Maybe your car was going to break down anyways. <laughs> maybe God let your car die right there so we could help you. Maybe God still wants you to move north, but you still needed help. It had nothing to do with God trying to stop me from moving. And I thought, could it really be that simple? And honestly, as I retrace my steps, kind of on the timeline of my life, me moving to Northern California at that time, if I had not done that, I would not be here today because of all the steps that God had me to take. The interpretation of my situation, I needed a new part that cost about five dollars <laughs> for my car. My car broke down. Yes, and you I needed a new part. I mean, it was a little bigger than this. And it was plastic. <laughs> and it took the guy 20 minutes to replace it. And when it was fixed, I drove to Northern California. Sometimes we try to make too much out of the Bible. Remember, it's a spiritual book. But it says what it means. And it means what it says. If I were to say to you, the boy rode his bike. Uh, kažem, je vozio svoj bicikl. There might be some things to observe. Uh, možda ima stvari koje se mogu posmatrati. Including what it does not say. Uh, to šta ne kaže. So the boy drove his car. Uh, je vozio svoja kola. No, it doesn't say that. Ne, to ne kaže. Well, but that's probably what it means. Ali to verovatno znači. It doesn't say anything about I didn't say anything about a car. Ništa nisam rekao o kolima. I said the boy rode his bike. Rekao sam bo, uh, dečak je vozio svoj bicikl. Okay, but what does that mean? Ali šta to znači? What kind of question is that? Kako je to pitanje? He rode his bike. On je vozio svoj bicikl. But that must represent something else. Ali to možda predstavlja nešto drugo. Why? Zašto? We don't talk like that. Mi ne govorimo tako. When I said feel free to get coffee. Kada kažem budite slobodni da, da se poslužite, poslužite kafom. That wasn't figurative language for To nije figurativan ovaj govor za for you should all leave now. <laughs> it meant, hey, look, there's coffee. And you can have some. It doesn't mean anything else. Here's an example, John chapter 3. Does that make sense? Have you ever found yourself doing that? I will go so far as to say this. Uh, do, do te tačke, da ovo. 
Be very careful of the word represents. Uh, budite veoma pažljivi u vezi reči ovo predstavlja. If we have time tomorrow, we'll talk about the use of symbolic language. Ako budemo imali vremena, sutra ćemo govoriti o uh, simboličkom govoru. Most of the time, it's not symbolic. Uh, u većini slučajeva nije simbolički. Most of the time, the people in the Old Testament represent the people in the Old Testament. Uh, uglavnom, u Starom Zavetu, ljudi predstavljaju ljude u Starom Zavetu. There's certain parallels uh, postoje uh, neke paralele. But be careful of using the word represents. Ali budite pažljivi u korištenju reči uh, predstavlja, predstavljati. So, John chapter 3. Uh, Jovanom mm-hmm. evanđelje 3. Mm, verse 22. Uh, 22. stih. After these things, Jesus and his disciples came into the land of Judea, and there he remained with them and baptized. Isus dođe zatim s učenicima svojim u judejsku zemlju i onda življaše s njima i krštavaše. Okay, so what's happening? I šta se se tu dešava? They're baptizing people. Oni krštavaju ljude. Simple? Jednostavno? Yeah. I'm okay with that. Ja sam okay s tim. Verse 23. 23. Now John also was baptizing in Anon near Salim. A Jovan krštavaše u Enonu u blizini Salima. Okay, so observation, who's John? A posmatranje, ko je uh, Jovan? Well, it's probably John the Baptist, right? Verovatno Jovan uh, krstitelj. And if you look at the context, you find out it's John the Baptist. Iako pogledate kontekst, jeste Jovan krstitelj. Okay, what was John doing? Ali šta je Jovan radio? Baptizing people. Krštavao ljude. Okay. Okay. He was baptizing in Enon near Salim. On je krštavao u Enonu u blizu Salima. Okay, well Enon near Salim, it must have some kind of special significance. E sad to Enon u Salimu uh, mora imati neku posebnu uh, vre- značaj. Because posebnu. it's in the Bible. Zato što je u Bibliji. And names always have special significance. I imena imaju uvek neku posebnu uh, vrednost, odnosno neku važnost. So this must be representing something else. I to mora da predstavlja nešto drugo. And please notice me being sarcastic. I molim vas primetite da sam sarkastičan. He was baptizing in Enon near Salim because there was much water there and they came and were baptized. A on krštavaše u Enonu blizu Salima jer onda beše mnogo vode i svete dolažaše onda da se krsti. Wait. They were baptizing there because there was a lot of water there. Oni su krštavali zato što je tamo bilo puno vode. So, if I do the math, ako, sorry. <laughs> ako računam, ako, there's a lot of people, ima puno ljudi, and they all want to be baptized. I hoću da se krstim, they wanted John to baptize them. I oni hoće da ih, uh, Jovan krsti, and he picked this place I on je izabrao ovo mesto, for a special reason iz specijalnog razloga, because there was a lot of water. Zato što je bilo puno vode. And that's it. I to je to. The boy rode his bike. Uh, dečak je vozio svoj bicikl. Well, but what does that mean? Ali šta to znači? Well, it means a lot of people, re- a, a lot of water was required to baptize a lot of people. Uh, to znači da je bilo potrebno mnogo vode da se krste, no, da se krsti mnogo ljudi. They didn't go to a little pond. Uh, nisu išli do nekog malog bureta ili nek... jezera. Jezera, Jezer. they, they went to a place that had a lot of water. Uh, otišli su na mesto gdje ima uh, puno vode. Jeremy, maybe your car was just going to break down. Uh, Jeremy, možda su tvoja kola trebala da, da, da se pokvare. But this place has to represent something. Ali ovo mesto treba da, da predstavlja nešto. No, it doesn't. Ne, ne mora. 
Sometimes the Bible is really that simple. Uh, ponekad je Biblija jednostavno tako jednostavna. Sometimes it's really that practical. Uh, nekad je toliko praktična. Our God is a God of order. Naš Bog je Bog reda. John, I want you to baptize people. Uh, Jovane, hoću da krstiš ljude. And people want to be baptized. I ljudi žele da budu kršteni. Let's be smart. Budimo pametni. This place has a lot of water. Ovo, ovo mesto ima puno vode. Why don't you go there? Zašto ne ideš tamo? Think about when Jesus fed the 5,000. Uh, pomislite na ono kada je uh, Isus nahranio 5,000 ljudi. This is the only miracle that's recorded in all four Gospels. Uh, to je jedino čudo koje je um, zabeleženo u sva četiri evanđelja. Jesus had them sit down in groups of 50 and 100. Uh, Isus je, ih je podelio u grupe od 50 i 100. It was 5,000 men plus women and children, we're told. Uh, bilo je uh, 5,000 ljudi plus žene i deca. And, and Jesus and the apostles were going to feed all of them. I Isus i apostoli bi trebali da, da ih nahrane sve. Here's a side note. I evo je fusnota. I would challenge you sometime in the next couple of weeks to study that passage from all four passages. I uh, da ću vam izazov da sad u, u neko dogledno vreme uh, prostudirate sva ta četiri uh, evanđelja. Uh, sorry, study the miracle from all four passages. Uh, da, da studirate to čudo kroz sva, sva četiri evanđelja. You're going to see a lot more. Vidjet ćete mnogo više. So why did he have them sit down in groups of 50 and 100? A zašto ih je on podelio u, u grupe od 50 i 100? Have you ever had a big party or something and you want to make sure everyone was fed? A, da li ste imali nekada neku veliku žurku i, i hteli ste da, da svako ove, da, da bude nahranjen? I mean, you can either do what we did today, set food there and okay, go get food. Uh, možete uraditi kao što smo mi danas, eno tamo mi hrana i uzmite je. And hope that the first people don't take a ton. <laughs> uh, I da se nadamo da oni koji su prvi baš ne pokupe puno, sve. Or you can have tables set out. A možemo imati i postavljene stolove. Bring the food to them. I da tamo donesemo hranu. So you can make sure everyone has enough. I da se pobirnemo da svi imaju dovoljno. Is it possible that Jesus had them sit down in groups of 50 and 100 not because 50 and 100 represents anything? Da li je moguće da ih je Isus podelio u 50 i 100 da to što ih je podelio u 50 i 100 ne znači ništa? Maybe that just made it a lot easier to pass out food. Jednostavno, to je možda jednostavniji način da se podeli hrana. 12 guys passing out food to probably 10,000 people. Uh, 12 ljudi treba da podele hranu za verovatno 10.000 ljudi. Hey Matthew, did you get that group right there? Uh, Matej, da li si uh, došao do te grupe tamo? I sure did, Peter. Uh, verovatno jesam, Petre. Go to the next group. Idi do sledeće grupe. Hi, you 50. Zdravo vas 50. Here you go, here's the food. Evo, evo vam hrana. Have a nice day. Imate dobar dan. I'm going to go to this next 100. Idem do sledećih 100. But imagine 10,000 people with 12 guys. Okay. <laughs> Ali zamislite 10,000 ljudi s 12 ljudi koji dele hranu. I mean, they could all split up into the crowd and here you go and maybe there's a person standing next to them that never got food. Zamislite tu situaciju, može ta osoba, jedna osoba stoji iza njih koja nije neće dobiti hranu. It's possible that God is just really really practical. Uh, moguće da je Bog veoma veoma praktičan. So be careful of that. Zato budite um, oprezni u vezi toga. One really funny example with this. Jedan zanimljiv uh, primer u vezi toga. In John 21. U Jovanu 21. You know the story. Znate priču? The apostles had gone back to fishing. Uh, apostoli su išli pecanje. <coughs> and of course they had caught nothing. I ništa nisu upotili. Jesus appears to them. 
Isus se pojavio. Cast your net on the other side of the boat. I uh, prebacili su mrežu na, na drugu stranu broda. They did. I oni su to uradili. Earlier they had caught nothing. Uh, prethodno ništa nisu ulovili. And now when they obeyed Jesus, they had caught a lot. I sada kada su poslušali Isusa, uh, napo- napunile su im se mreže. That's Ribu. another story for another time. To je druga priča za neko drugo vreme. But they tell us Ali on, oni nam kažu in verse u stihu Oh no. Uh, verse 11. U 11. stihu Simon Peter went up and dragged the net to land full of large fish 153 and although there were so many the net was not broken. Uh, Simon Peter uđe u lađu i izvuče na kraju mreže punu 153 velikih riba i mada ih je toliko bilo ne podere se mreža. Why do I mention this totally random verse? <laughs> uh, zašto sam sad ovo nasumice izabrao ovaj stih? Because there's certain people that would say that all numbers in the Bible have meaning. Zato što postoje neki ljudi koji kažu da svaki broj u, u uh, Bibliji ima neko značenje. And some of those people have things published. Uh, neki su od toga nešto i objavili, znači knjigu su objavili na tu temu. People like William Barclay. Uh, čovjek, na primjer, kao William Barclay. He says this. On kaže ovo. John had a way of putting hidden meaning into his gospel. Uh, Jovan je stavio neka skrivena značenja u svoje uh, e- evanđelje. And he says that uh, Cyril of Alexandria had an explanation for the 153. Cyril is Alexandria Aha. Aha. Mm-hmm. Okay. Dobre. Hvala. <laughs> Hvala. He said 153 is made up of three things. Uh, 153 je od tri stvari. First there is the 100. Uh, prvo sto je sto. And 100 represents the fullness of the Gentiles. Uh, sto predstavlja kao puninu uh, pagana. And so he says the, the 100 stands for the fullness of the Gentiles who will be gathered into Christ. Uh, znači sto uh, je, je punina on, uh, Nina, pagana koji će biti sabrani u Hristu. Ok. Second, there is the 50. Zatim 50. And the 50 stands for the remnant of Israel. Remnant? Uh, the, those remaining. Ostatak Izraela. Aha. A 50 je ostatak Izraela. Ok. <laughs> Third, there is the 3. Uh, 3 je treće. 3. And the 3 stands for the Trinity to whose glory all things are done. Uh, 3 je... Uh, za trojstvo čija slava i I mean, it's not even important. <laughs> za, za slavu je to učinjeno. There's another one and uh, the other one's really crazy actually. Ovaj je stvarno lud. This is from Augustine. Ovo je od Augustina. Augustine says that 10 is the number of the law. Uh, Augustin je rekao da je deset uh, prvoj zakona. Because there are ten commandments. Zato što postoje deset uh, zapovesti. Seven is the number of grace. Sedam je broj uh, milosti. For the gifts of the Spirit are seven. Zato što postoje sedam uh, darova duha. Ok. Now seven plus ten makes seventeen. Uh, sedam plus deset je sedam. <laughs> No, this is real. <laughs> if you add up 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 all the way up to 17, I ako se beremo, znači 1 plus 2 plus 3 sve do 17, that equals 153. I to je jednako 153. Oh, oh, oh. so, <laughs> 7 plus 10 is 17. <laughs> 7 plus 10 is 17. And 1 plus 2 all the way up to 17 is 153. <laughs> so 153 stands for all those who either by the law or by grace have come to Jesus. Uh, 
u, u zakonu ili, ili, zakonu, ili, 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 ili po zakonu. milosti koji su uh, se ukrenuli Isusu. Honestly, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> What this Mislim, iskreno, je, to n- nema veze. And then finally from Jerome. Uh, post- Lovely name. <laughs> uh, na kraju, Jerome. He said that in the sea there are 153 different kinds of fishes. And that their catch of fish uh, includes every kind of fish. Uh, i da je taj ulov ribe predstavlja svaku vrstu ribe. <laughs> and therefore the number symbolizes the fact that someday all men of all nations will come to Jesus. I sve to predstavlja mm. da će svi narodi uh, doći Isusu. Wow. <laughs> People believe that stuff though. Ljudi veruju u te stvari. Is it possible that the boy rode his bike means the boy rode his bike? Da li je moguće da je dečak vozio svoj bicikl i da to znači da je dečak vozio svoj bicikl? The boy rode his bike 153 meters. Boy, uh, dečak je vozio svoj bicikl 153 metra. Well, if it's in the Bible, it has to mean something. Ako je u Bibliji, to mora da znači nešto. Is it possible it's this? Da li je moguće ovo? Is it possible that these guys were fishermen? Uh, da su ovi momci bili, uh, Any of you guys ever fish? Uh, da li ste vi nekada, oh, Do you know any fishermen? Da li znate neke ribare? When you ask a fisherman, how many fish did you catch today? <laughs> I kada neke pecaroše kaže, pitate, ovaj, koliko ste uh, riba uhvatili? They never say, oh, a whole bunch. Nikada ne kažu, eto, gomilu. We caught 21 fish today. Nego kažu, na primjer, 21 ribu smo upecali. Eh, we caught four. Pa mi smo upecali četiri. 57. 57. 153. 153. Oh, by the way, they were fishermen plural. Uh, inače, uh, bilo je više, znači, ribara. And they had Matthew the tax collector there to help. I imali su Mateja, carenika, odnosno carenika. Look at all these fish. Snima. How vidite, many is that? Vidite ovu su ribu, koliko je to? Matthew comes. Mateja dolazi. He's got his little uh, abacus. It's a counting thing. I ima onaj svoj abacus, ona, ona računaljka. Mhm. 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 153. It's 153. Well, who gets them? Iko, ko će... We're going to split them up. Aha, onda ko će da plati poraz, jel? Onda ćemo mi to da podelimo. Guess what I'm doing right now? I šta sad radim? I'm speculating. Spekulišem. But I don't think 153 means anything except for 153 fish. Mislim da 153 ništa ne znači drugo osim 153 ribe. When you're interpreting the scriptures, don't get don't get carried away. Don't go too far. Uh, kada interpre- interpretirate pismo, nemoj, nemojte baš ići tako, to, tako daleko. When you're doing your, your Mark chapter 2 work this afternoon, don't get too far. Kada budete radili domaći Marko 2, nemojte baš pretjerano daleko otići. The men up on the roof. Uh, ljudi na krovu. The friends of the paralyzed man. Uh, prijatelji paralizovanog broke through the roof uh, su ušli kroz krov lowered their friend down spustili uh, svog prijatelja in the middle of a crowded house u sred uh, prepune kuće Jesus teaching a bible study Isus uči uh, biblijski čas I think Jesus probably smiled uh, mislim da se Isus smešio He might have laughed. Može se smejao. He probably thought, "Okay, we're going to take a break." Može pomislio, sad ćemo napraviti pauzu. It might have been Peter's house. Može to bila Petrova kuća. He probably wasn't smiling. On se vjerovatno nije smešio. But those four men on the roof? Ali ona četvorica na krovu? They don't represent anything. Oni ne predstavljaju ništa. Maybe faith. 
možda veru. Because Jesus sees their faith. Zato što je Isus video njihovu veru. But they're just four guys that want to help their friend. Oni su samo četvorice koji žele da pomognu svom prijatelju. And the house was too crowded for them to walk in the front door. A kuća je bila prenatrpana da bi oni mogli da uđu na na vrate. Don't let your interpretations get carried away. Nemojte da vaša interpretacija da vas malo ponese. I'm sorry I've kept you long. Žao mi što sam vas zadržao. So we'll be back this evening. Uh, vratit ćemo se uveče. Tonight we're going to work on that passage a little bit. Uh, radit ćemo večeras na tom odeljku. See if we can find some good application from it. Uh, vidjet ćemo da nađemo neke, neke dobre uh, primene. And if we, have, if we have time we'll look at some other um, some other interpretation thoughts. Ako budemo imali vremena, daćemo još neke misli u vezi načina interpretacije. Any questions about that at all? Ima neki pitanja po tom pitanju? Are any of you guys going to start counting 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 17? And... <laughs> da li ste počeli da, da, da sabirate ono 1 plus 2 plus 3 do 153? The, the sad part for me is there's still people today that think that way. That's how you have to understand the Bible. Uh, tužan deo mi je u celoj toj priči da i danas postoje ljudi koji razmišljaju na taj način. There's probably non-Christians that, that think this. Postoje neki nekrišćani koji misle ovo. And maybe some of you before you were a Christian you thought this as well. Uh, Možda ste neki od vas razmišljali na isti način pre nego što ste bili hrišćani. You can make the Bible say anything you want it to say. Uh, možete da učinite da vam Biblija govori šta god želite da vam govori. Sure you can. Naravno da možete. But doesn't mean it makes sense. Ali to ne mora da znači da ima smisla. Doesn't mean you're right. Uh, ne znači da ste u pravu. And actually you're doing what Peter talked about. Uh, upravo govorimo twisting the scriptures. Peter talked about twisting the scriptures. Uh, Peter je govorio o izvrtanju pisma. You can make the Bible say anything you want it to say. Uh, možete da učinite da vam Biblija govori šta god želite da vam govori. Well, you can, but not really. Možete, ali u suštini ne možete. Because words have meaning. Uh, zato što reči imaju značenje. We are able to communicate today actually in two different languages because words have meaning. Uh, danas možemo da, da komuniciramo na dva jezika zato što reči imaju značenje. Everyone that's been translating this weekend, you guys aren't making things up. <laughs> Svako ko je danas uh, prevodio je izmišljao. Oh, maybe you are. I don't know. Možda smo. A ni, ni, uh, <laughs> niko nije izmišljao, izvinjavam se. Prevod, but there's other translators like, no, it's, it's this. <laughs> <laughs> ali ima uvek oni koji će ispraviti. Why? Zašto? Because words have meaning. Zato što reči imaju značenje. If I say today, I, I'm going to go back to the hotel and take a nap because I'm tired. Ako kažem da ću se vratiti u hotel da malo odspavam zato što sam umoran. That just means I'm tired. A, to znači da sam umoran. I'm going to get in my car and drive. A, sešću u kole i vozit ću. You don't walk away from the conversation and think, I wonder what he meant by that. <laughs> what does that really mean? <laughs> Words have meaning. God wants us to understand his word. We don't need to add to it and make it harder to understand. Ne treba da dodamo tome i da učinimo da to bude teško za razumevanje. All right, God bless you guys this afternoon. See you this evening. Bog vas blagoslovio. Vidimo se uveče. Thank you so much. Hvala vam. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.